Hello, my name is Kira, and I'm going to take you guys through a little flow today on the Allegro 2. So the theme of this flow is unilateral training. So that means one side at a time, and its focus in this class is going to be on upper body, um, the postural muscles of the back, really working the triceps, but all of unilateral training is sneaky oblique work. So those are your lateral ab muscles, they're the more superficial side, abdominal muscles, internal and external obliques will most definitely be feeling these exercises. Um, a little bit of a focus, well, quite a bit of focus on back extension, um, not quite as much on flexion, not really much at all. So we're gonna be working with one weighted ball or dumbbell, totally optional though. We'll only be doing one series with the weighted ball. The plus of having a weighted ball is you can work on your grip strength. So really it's gonna get the forearms working a little bit more and the little muscles in the fingers and hands as you try to grip that bigger surface. So I'm gonna use a weighted ball, challenge myself a little bit. Um, aside from that, we will be on the blue spring, which is the like, medium spring if you're not on an Allegro 2, balanced body equipment, like a medium spring. I'm using one of those. And later we will be using a yellow spring in two different positions. So let's get started. I have my foot bar down for now. Actually, you don't need it up for anything. It's gonna stay down. And we're gonna start with a little bit of Oh, I lied. We're gonna, if you have one, use a squishy ball as well as the weighted ball. Lay on our back for a little bit of unilateral supine arm work. I have it on that blue, but if you needed to go lighter, a high yellow would be your alternative. Ball between the knees, find your relatively neutral spine. If you needed to modify here, imprint the spine and from tabletop, bring the knees in a little bit more. That will naturally bring you into more of that imprinted spine, posterior pelvic tilt. And I recommend you from starting there. This is a tough series with unilateral work. So give yourself the advantage. A little bit of easier um, time recruiting through the abdominals if you're in that posterior pelvic tilt. Of course, eventually, if you wanna challenge yourself more, go into neutral spine and See if you could, with whatever position, just keep your back and pelvis stable, whatever you commit to, just commit to it for the entire um, series. Okay, ball between the knees, and I'm gonna make sure that I'm on even on both sides of the pelvis, not rocking side to side at all. Okay, I'm gonna take some tension into that strap, make sure my shoulders are relaxed away from the shoulder blocks. The free arm can be resting hand on belly, out to the side, or if you really need help stabilizing yourself, holding on to the um, same side shoulder block to give you a little more support. Um, we're gonna start with the palm facing in towards you. So pinky facing down towards the foot bar, towards your thigh. And let's go straight arm, exhale down. We're gonna do tricep, tricep kicks, extensions. As you extend up the elbow, I want you to squeeze that silver ball. Five, so we're gonna do two more. Staying heavy through the rib cage, lower ribs pressing down into the mat, heavy on the back of that pelvis. Now let's do straight arm, lower and lift for five. Controlling the speed of the springs, going in about the same speed in both directions. I'm bad at counting, so I'm gonna say that was five. And for our last variation today, we're gonna to do T arms. Now we're gonna to open to the side, and this one's hard, so I definitely recommend a long loop. I'm already in it. You don't have to go all the way to 90 degrees. I'm stopping here. So 90 would be in line with my shoulder. Lead with the pinky, blade of the hand, to come back to your hip. So you're squeezing the ball on that hard part. Squeeze, big exhale. This is where you might need to hold on to that shoulder block for a little more support. And as your nervous system and body get the hang of it, try without the support, really lengthening that arm, reaching the arm long away from you, squeezing the ball. And we're gonna switch sides. Okay. Alrighty, holding on to that long loop, assuming your neutral spine or imprint, which is what I'm choosing intentionally to do here. Usually I would personally be in a neutral, Spine heavy on the middle of the back of your pelvis with the ribs down. 
Um, but I want to here really focus on imprinting the spine and getting as much inner thigh and abdominal work as I can to support this shape. Okay, arm up towards the ceiling. Big breath in. Exhale straight arm goes down, palm facing you. Now triceps for five. Squeezing the ball, pulling the abdominals in on that exhale and extending the arm. Shoulders are away from the shoulder blocks, away from your ears. Keeping the arm straight, lower and lift for five. Keep squeezing on the exertion, on the downward movement of the arm. Feeling the armpit musculature, your lat, and your serratus working. I think that was five. We're gonna go into the T-arm. This is my bad side. So I'm just gonna keep it really small. I'm definitely not going to 90 degrees. In fact, I'm going to like 75. Remember to squeeze that ball as you lead with the pinky blade of the hand towards your thigh. Working on keeping the chest open, externally rotating the shoulders, and we're done with that little series. You can totally do small arm circles, but just like with the T, I would keep them small instead of going full range with your circles. I would do small circles out in front of you on like, if this is zero, this is 90 on that 45 degree. That's my recommendation. If you're gonna try circles, I'm not. I don't wanna do it. All right, I'm gonna do a roll up. If you get stuck with your roll up, by the way, ditch the ball. Use your hands under your low back. And use your hands to help press you up. Just a little way to kind of get you up there and train that movement pattern. If it's hard for you to flex through the lumbar spine there. I get it. it used to be a lot harder for me. Let's put that ball away. And sticking on our blue spring, we're gonna do a little bit of non-unilateral work, kind of going back and forth today with bilateral, both arms, and unilateral one at a time. So I'm on blue spring. I'm gonna have this ball ready because we're gonna use it in a little bit. And I'm taking hold of my canvases. So above where the straps meet on this one. Sometimes we have a buckle, but I'm holding above where the straps meet. Nice and tall, make sure you're not um, anterior pelvic tilting. That's my go-to, so I always have to remind myself to lengthen the spine, reach the tailbone down between my legs towards the carriage, pull the lower ribs back a little bit so they're not flared forwards, stacking your diaphragm for breathing over your pelvic floor diaphragm. And then just check in with your shoulders and neck, relax the neck, make sure that the ears and shoulders, ribs, hips, and knees are all in a nice long line. And when we do these pullbacks, we don't want to roll the shoulders forward. So think about shining your breastbone, your sternum, ever so slightly up towards the tower, towards the top of my tower here. Inhale, prepare. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through first split. Pull the arms back nice and smoothly. Hold for a moment and bring it back forward without losing that tautness, the tension in the straps. If I were to go fast here, I'll just do one, and I get slack, that's dangerous. First of all, I'm going to be pulled back in by the springs, and second of all, opportunity to face plant and fall in the well. So really practice and teach your clients to just go a little bit slower. There's definitely room for speedy work in Pilates. It's not all done slow and controlled, but here's not the place to do the speedy work because you don't want to face plant. So exhale, pull back, little pause, inhale, release forward. Just the arm bones are moving, not the shoulders dancing around too much. Two more, going with the shoulder extension and flexion. Arm travels behind the hips, arm travels forward. Um, just for fun, I'm gonna do one chest expansion. Actually, I'll do two. Inhale back, pull the arms back. Exhale, look over the left shoulder. Inhale, look over the right shoulder. And exhale, forward release. We'll do one more looking over the right first. All right, we're gonna go into a half squat. So I'd like everybody to pull your arms back slightly behind your hips into shoulder extension. Make sure you didn't just roll the shoulders, shoulders and spine forward. Now bring your booty back, hips are back. 
You're in a little half squat. So just like a squat mechanic, hips are back, torso forward on a 45 degree angle. Keep the elbows high and we do triceps more, more triceps. Lots of triceps today, that's your warning. So if it's too hard, just hold a little bit closer to the end of your loop to invest enough back tension. So you can always adjust, micro adjustments are key in Pilates. Elbows stay lifted for these triceps. I'm gonna go back to the canvas. I get one more tricep work. You're spreading the sits bones, the base of the pelvis. This next one, you're going to keep the arms straight. Really feel the reach of the arms. Don't let the shoulders go up, shrugging toward the ears. I feel a shape. We're holding it for three, two, one. Keep the arms straight and behind your hips as we press the hips forward into extension. Arms come forward. Combo time. We're going to combine straight arm pullbacks with that little half squat tricep kickback. One of each. Okay. Nice and slow. Big breath in. Exhale. And the next one is our transitionary one. Pull back, keep arms back, hips go back. One full range of motion, tricep, beautiful tricep kickback. The next one is our transition. All the way back, keep the arms back. Nice long line as you come up, hips forward, arms forward, repeat. Two more rounds. Less talking, more concentrating on my behalf right now. Reach into the straps, pressing hips forward, then arms. One more time. Holding it back, hips go back, elbows stay high. Hard. I'm doing it with you. I feel it too. This is tough. Oh my gosh. That's why we were on a blue spring, you guys, okay? <laughs> it's tough. So, shaking it out a little bit. Just gives up a little stretch and hold on to my blocks. Round the spine back a bit and go into a little extension. One more. Curve the head towards tailbone, round the spine, and tailbone towards front of the head. And extension. Okay, grab your weight. We're just gonna do a little unilateral work. Well, it's not really because we have load, but different types of load. We're dealing with a strap and string, spring tension, um, and then we're using the weighted ball. So just different variable loads, which is good for our nervous system. So I'm gonna start with that ball on my left hand, and then I'm gonna use the long loop. You can use small if you want more tension with my palm in a neutral position, not extending at the wrist, and my palms facing in towards me, that neutral position. Um, I'm just sitting like this, you could do any position, like cross-legged, whatever feels comfier for you, or legs up straight even, if you can sit up tall. Um, okay, a little body scan. Shoulders are level, not scrunching up, just a neutral position. Just shrug your shoulders wherever they fall, just let them be relatively relaxed. Shake your neck out a little bit after all that tricep work. Okay, a little more tricep work. <laughs> Holding the ball on the left hand, we're gonna do scissor arms. So the left arm goes up in shoulder flexion as the right arm goes back in extension. And we just repeat that. So exhale and inhale. Exhale, left arm goes up, right arm goes back. You don't have to bring that left arm super high. If it feels good, just going to shoulder height, you can stay there today. Otherwise, go towards clearing your ear. Doesn't have to happen. Keeping the arms both pretty straight. You can add on to this if you would like with a little neck rotation towards the arm that's going back into shoulder extension. So the strap side, that is. Just letting the neck move as in chest expansion. I don't know how many that was, but that's going to be enough. I'm just going to go on to the next exercise. You're going to bring the left hand onto the canvas, palm facing down. And then if you're using the weighted ball, we're going to do a punch. So this is a variation upon the archer or the double arm twist with a cross strap load, okay? So I'm square off towards my tower. I'm holding my ball here by my shoulder, just by my chest. And then 
Take an inhale. As I exhale, it's a forward punch and a rotational row, upright row. Sorry, high row is what I meant to say. So your elbow on that left arm that's rowing, and um, it's going to be a little bit lower. The elbow's a little lower than your shoulder for that high row. Palms facing down. When you punch, you can rotate. Palm faces down. When you retract the arm back, palm faces up. I want you to really focus on pulling, drawing the left shoulder blade back to help you rotate through the upper spine. And reaching the right arm forward will also give you a deeper rotation. Wrapping that right shoulder blade forward and the left shoulder blade back. This weighted ball is getting so heavy. I'm just going to do one more. Feeling the oblique muscles help to rotate you. We're going to go to the other side. Oh, I'm going to rest my hands and fingers a bit. Shake it out. Alrighty. We're going to start with the scissors. So left palm holding long strap. Um, you can also do a high yellow. I forgot to say that for this whole series. High yellow works as well. Holding that ball again. So shoulder flexion with the ball, with the weight side, extension with the left. Here we go. And with this work, you might notice your imbalances. For me, I have an um, issue with my right shoulder. I do not have full mobility. So for me, I cannot go as high in shoulder flexion on this side. So I listen to my body because I don't want it to be hating me later. And you do the same. We're going to add that neck rotation. Looking towards the left because we're pulling that strap back. We always look towards the arm going back. Two more. Oh my god, I need to rest for a second. Ooh, okay. Oh, okay, cross. Hold on onto the canvas with the right hand. So you have that cross strap, the left strap and right hand. Holding the ball, palm facing up, right in front of my left shoulder. Squaring off to face forward. Big inhale. And exhale, we move. Inhale, square forward. Exhale, punch and twist. If it feels good, give yourself that counter rotation. So instead of squaring forward, rotate a little in the opposite direction. It's not wrong, just do what feels good. Find an intention. If you want to work on that anti-rotation when you come back, um, stopping here versus continuing the rotation. This side feels much better. The right arm is suffering on the other side with that ball, with the punch. Two more. Slow it down. Woo! Alrighty, we're done with that guy. Get rid of that weight ball. And let's go uh, to a high yellow. You could totally do this on a blue, but my arms are going to just be toast if I do that on a blue. So I'm going to stick to a high yellow. If you're doing this as a standalone or someone's really strong, you can stay on that blue. Um, I'm going to change it up here and do cross-legged just for fun. Okay. So we're going to do some unilateral front arm work, starting with a rotation similar to what we just did. I'm going to have this arm in front of me and then this um, long loop is in my hand. I rotate back, inhale, exhale forward. Very similar to what we just did facing the back. If you wanted to, you can add that weight in the free hand, but I don't necessarily want to right now, so I'm not going to. One more like this. You can also use the small loop for more tension, but again, I don't want to, so I'm gonna stick to this today, I'm committed. We're gonna just do serve a tray. And I'm just demonstrating things here, so I'm not really counting my reps all that well. We're gonna do one more for three of these, serve a trays. I know it's not the full choreography, we're just doing that first half, not opening the arms. Now, arms are relatively straight with a soft bend at the elbow, forward arm sweep. So shoulder right, perhaps higher, if that feels safe in your shoulders. Pop 
hug a tree, okay? We're gonna go in front, I'm, gonna, I'm just mimicking all of this with my right arm, by the way. You can have your hand on your belly, on your thigh, pressing into the carriage to help support you. So maybe I'll try that for the first few, pressing down into the carriage to gain a little bit more stability as I do these hug of trees. I'm making sure I'm not rotating. This is anti-rotational core work for those obliques. Otherwise, if my obliques were going lazy, I would be rotating here. So I wanna keep them active, not letting this left arm go way behind me. That's gonna be so much more work for the shoulders and your core. Not necessarily good work if the arm goes way back behind the shoulder. So I'm sticking that plane of scaption, which is slightly forward in my peripheral vision when I open the arm. I'm gonna do two with the other arm mimicking the movement. So yeah, don't wanna go super heavy with this unilateral work. So try high yellow, try high yellow short loop. If that's still not challenging enough, go blue spring long loop. Just make those little progressive steps and don't hurt yourself, don't overdo it because this is like deceivingly hard. <laughs> okay, let's do the other side. Long loop, we're gonna start with our rotations and cross my strap. Okay, reach the left arm forward as I rotate towards that bent right arm and punch forward. Let that spine rotate. We're building strength around the spines, getting stronger for those stability muscles that go right around our spine while letting the spine be mobile. Try to get your spine to move in all the ways it's designed to move every day flexion, extension, lateral flexion, aka side bending, and rotation. One more rotational punch. We go right into serve a tray, level shoulders, sitting up super tall, perched upon my sits bones. Palms are up. I think we did three of these. We went right into straight arm sweeps, soft bend in the elbow. Shoulder height may be higher. Two. Three. Hug a tree. I did the first few. I'm gonna do that same on the other side, pressing into the carriage to help me feel a little more stable. Staying in your peripheral vision with that arm that's traveling out to the side. I'm gonna do the mirror with the other arm. Kind of like this. Last one. Woo, a lot of arm work, even on a high yellow. Okay, and before switching sides, for your more advanced clients, um, you could do well, you can do tall kneeling for your arm circles, or you could do one set each side with a half kneeling lunge. Careful with coming into it. Be very cautious. It's a light spring. I'm stabilizing my back um, outer part of the ankle against that shoulder block. I'm right nice and tall here, plugging this left hip back a little bit to try to keep my pelvis pretty square instead of rotating to the right. And I'm just gonna do three arm circles each direction, super slow. Long loops feel good here. It's a light spring. Don't let the carriage go in really fast. Control, resist the springs yanking you back in. Don't want to lose that tautness on the ropes and have them go slack. My circle is forward of my body again, not going back behind my torso. Staying in that plane of scaption, reaching my tailbone towards the carriage. Woo, it's a little hip flexor stretch on that back leg. I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Careful with your transition here. Knee over ankle on that front side. Make sure the hip isn't rotating to the left. You're plugging that front hip down and back a bit, squaring off the pelvis. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. Three each direction, starting forward. Really reaching through your wingspan, lengthening those arms. A lot of balance and stability work here. And reverse, reaching into the straps the whole time. Keeping tension in both straps, not letting one go slack and the other taut. Whew. So hard, okay. 
hard to do it well. Putting straps back. Uh, let me see, let me see. We're gonna do, we're gonna do the yellow. We're gonna do the, oh, the triceps. It's so much work. Okay, yellow spring on low position this time. This is something that I learned from Jen, the studio owner here, and it is brutal. It's so much work for the back side of your arms. We're going to actually, I skipped a step, take these long loops off the pigs, throw them in the well. Now we're good to go. The short box is gonna go over the sides of the frame. Pretty close, but not touching. That's gonna be a lot more tension. You're welcome to have it touch your risers, the upright. Uh, I'm not gonna make it that much work, so I'm gonna inch my back a little bit um, away from the tower. Make sure it's even on both sides. One word of safety here for this box setup, in which we're gonna do some major triceps and some planking on the forearms, is don't have your students have their hands here. It can tip. It might not, but it can tip, so be wary of that and have your hands wide, at least shoulder width, maybe a little wider depending on your intention. I'm going to be like relatively shoulder width apart in the middle of the box. Okay, we're going to start. So, a little prep. Let's just do a little spinal mobility first. So knees are going to be against the blocks and I just have my shoulders, elbows, and wrists stacked here. I'm just going to do a few cat and cows. This is just feel good movement, programming what feels good for you and your students. I'm gonna pull the carriage in, maintaining my cowl, my extension. <laughs> it's gonna pop the box. That's kind of how far you can go here. And then I'm going to bunge you right into a railroad and back. Extend, lightly tap the headrest to the box, looking forward, arch back, nod chin towards the chest. And round as the knees come back under you. One more like that. Extension and draw yourself forward. Flexion around the back. To reverse that, so I'm going to round my spine, pull the carriage in, rounding as much as I can, really feeling the tailbone tuck under, tap the box, and then extend back. Tuck under and round. Draw the carriage forward. Extend back and round. This is not classical Pilates. This is me just playing around with things that feel good in my body. Extend. Okay, now that we just got some like mobility, we're gonna stabilize. I always like to kind of play around with a mix of mobility, letting things move, um, just letting things feel good, and then stabilizing. We don't always want to be like uptight, really tempting everything in Pilates. That's not functional because. Are we like that in real life? And maybe you are, but yeah, I, I don't think that would be very comfortable. So we're gonna get that blend of mobility and stability. Alrighty, um, roll the toes, tuck them. So you're getting that toe extension, optional, but I like doing that for this. Your knees are a few inches away from your shoulder blocks, okay? So that once we have our hands in the middle of the box, the middle, the middle, okay? Safety, not on the edge about shoulder width or wider apart, we can, you can modify by keeping your knees up against this and just keeping hips over knees, um, more of a modification here, not going into the full kneeling plank and just being here as we pull ourselves forward. Um, that's a modification, so you can always start there. Otherwise, your knees are back um, a few inches away from the blocks, curl the toes, and we're going to, from this position, make sure your shoulders are nice and stable so they're wide, Instead of narrow, retracted, they're wide, protracted, and they're low. So they're set low using your armpit muscles to keep them there instead of shrugging up towards the shoulder and losing it. We want to be nice and intentional about the shoulder blade placement here. Okay, so this is a lot of triceps and upper abdominals. We're going to just take a little stretch back for a moment and then tuck the tailbone, undulate forward, press the hips forward, adjust your knees if you need a little more space. The front of the thighs are kissing the shoulder blocks and they're gonna stay kissing the shoulder blocks. Nice neutral spine. Inhale, we're gonna do six of these for now. Exhale, draw yourself forward. It's like that lat pull that we do with kneeling abdominals. With our hands on the frame. That's okay if you bump a few times, I'm sure we will. Exhale forward, inhale back. Keep those shoulders nice and stable. Two more. Ooh, I'm gonna rest, round the back. Uh, you can pull that carriage in and get that lower back. 
final stretch. Oh, alrighty. So you can do like three, two or three sets of six. I'm gonna do one more set, and then I'm gonna add little tricep dips that are just awful, little tiny pulses, I mean to say. So again, let's practice. You got a little space. Four inches, three inches or so between knees and shoulder blocks, hands midway um, wide on the box. I'm um, doing forward, so I'm getting that tuck tailbone roll, rounding through the spine. Now I'm in a nice, beautiful knee length plank, curl those toes under. Inhale, set the shoulder blades wide and low on the back. Exhale, pull yourself forward. Using the lats, using the serratus, strengthening the musculature around your armpits. Oh my gosh, I keep bumping. That's okay. The equipment will survive. Now I have a little more awareness of hitting the bumper. So it's a small range of movement if you don't have that box all the way towards the uprights. So this last one, I'm going to hold myself forward. And I'm going to do little pulses here. It's awful. Three, four, five. Not letting that lower back arch and keeping it supported, keeping neutral spine. Three, two, one. Ooh, back into a child's pose. So if you are feeling a lot of pain or tension in that lower back, just modify by keeping the thighs or the knees against the shoulder block and your hips over the knees. That'll make it a little easier to support your back because we want to make sure we're not arching and tipping the pelvis forward. We want to stay neutral or even slightly tucking the tailbone under, going into a posterior tilt to help lengthen through those lower back. Um, vertebrae, okay? Whew. We're going to do a side, uh, side plank and front plank from the forearms, walking forward. I'm going to start on my knees, come to my forearms. Um, you can have palms down, or I like being on the lateral pinky blade, so like this, palms facing each other, or even palms up to really work more on my external rotation, which is a little bit limited on the right, severely limited. Um, so I like those positions instead of hands together or palms down, but you do what feels most achievable, accessible for you. We're going to step one foot back, make the shoulder blades nice and stable, take a big inhale, head is in line with spine, and exhale, bring the other leg back, feet are together. You can hold this for as long as you'd like. You can modify by tapping one knee at a time down. You can modify by having both knees down and and the shoulder blocks kind of get in the way there, so maybe one at a time tapping the knees down. Hold a minute, reaching back through those heels, pressing away from the box. Whew. Three, two, one. I'm going to use my knee to help me transition to a side plank. So you can modify for your side plank, by the way, by having one knee down. But again, try to make sure you're not too close to the edge here. So you'd have to probably bring that knee there. And then this forearm is pressing into the box. My elbow is under that shoulder. And I'm actively pressing away to prevent that collapsing of the shoulder up towards the ear. Modification. Otherwise, stagger top leg in front of back leg. Hold that side plank for a few breath cycles. That's good enough for me. I did side planks yesterday, so I'm really feeling it. Okay, other side. So, you can be on your knee. To start, you have that elbow under your shoulder. You can start just holding it on the knee, free, working through our shoulder stability, through the muscles in the side body, especially on the underside. You can always stagger. Top foot in front of bottom. You can use this free hand, by the way, for a little support on the box. That's one option. Or hand on the hip. Hand up. Whew. Big breaths. Press away from that box. Stay so stable. So strong. Three, two, and one. Don't collapse. Come out. Take a little stretch. Catch your breath. Took it out of me. Rolling up. We're gonna end with some work on a blue spring, prone, so laying on our belly, that is, with this box. 
knees gonna just go over the shoulder blocks, okay? We're gonna put our straps back. So this sequence, we're gonna break it up with a little child's pose just to rest the back extensors because it's quite a lot. We're only gonna do a few of each exercise, but this is a, um, a lot of ideas, things that you could do on this blue spring using this setup. We're even gonna do pull-ups at the risers and this is gonna close this little sequence, okay? And your upper body's gonna need a little hot bath and some Epsom salts after this. Pallies minus. We're gonna lay on our belly, facing the tower, chest over the edge, okay? Get your little fidgets and squirms out. Feel nice and stable here, nice and relaxed. So I like to start with a nice flop. <sighs> Letting the head be heavy, taking some big breaths. Now we're gonna energize those legs. Come into our nice like plank position, long crown of lying through the crown of the head, through the spine, out the feet. Um, legs do not have to be all the way together if that doesn't feel accessible or creates any pain in the lower back. You can be in turnout or parallel. You do you. This is more turned out. Sometimes I like that. But for now I'm gonna do parallel. Kneecaps to the ground. So you're lengthening, reaching long through the legs, lengthening the kneecaps. The front of the pelvis, your hip bones, the ASIS, and your pubic bone are on the same plane. You're not tipping pelvis forward or back. Same plane, gently pressing them into the box, not clenching your glutes too much. And we're gonna start with the hands here. We're just gonna do a little arm slide. So reach the right arm forward, like you're going to be on a runway, and then the airplane takes off to the sky, lifting into flexion, bringing it back and switching sides. Slide the left arm forward. Lifting up. One more each side. You can do more than this. Just noticing what your flexion feels like. For me, it's a little crunchy on both shoulders today. I'm going to do one more because I want to show you. You can also reach with the palm facing in towards your body. That might feel more accessible in the shoulder joint for some folks. Gives you a little more external rotation. Feels so much better for me, actually. Okay, next, you're just going to do the same thing with the leg. Reach one leg up and lower it down. Lift it, reach it away from you and then up and down. We're gonna do both together and down. Okay, we're gonna do swan and then a modified grasshopper. Grasshopper is usually done facing the other way, but it cannot be the comfiest experience for some people's pubic bones. So we're gonna do it this way, which is a fun little modification. But first, just basic swan. Stretch your arms in front of you like we did earlier. They're nice and long, they're gonna stay long. We're gonna just lift ourselves up on an inhale into our big, beautiful upper mid-back extension. Take an inhale, actually, exhale. Abs engage, inhale. Bring your gaze slightly forward to the end of your reformer. Just not pinching the back of your neck. Exhale to reset. Inhale forward. Exhale down. I'm looking at the logo. It says balance body allegro at the back of the frame. If I were to look up too high, see how I'm crunching the back of the neck? I want to try to keep that long. One more. You can always play around with swapping the breath too. Exhaling to come up. I typically like, in my body at least, inhaling to lift into extension. Okay. So one more thing actually I forgot to say, you can do some swimming legs, you can do heel beats as you're doing that swan just to get a little bit more close to your chain work for the back of the body. So swimming, swimming swan. So that's fun. <laughs> it's a lot more inner thigh work, but fun. Okay, we're going to go into our grasshopper. So you lift into swan, inhale, you come back, I'm in external rotation, I do three little beats, click. Click, click, lengthen and lift and back down. And then lengthen, lift. So breathe in here and then exhale for lengthen and lift. Try to make that simultaneous. Probably you can do it better than I just did. And then lengthen, lift. That was definitely not simultaneous. So the breathing is actually a little weird. I'm gonna to try to do that better. It's, I'm trying to replicate the breathing of the normal grasshopper and I'm, I'm having difficulty. Just breathe. That's the main thing it boils down to, just breathe. 
So what I want to do is lift into swan. We're going to do this on an inhale for now at least. Exhale back. Let's do three little pulses on the inhale, crossing the ankles, lifting the kneecaps, and then exhale. So we're going to always be changing our breath on this one. This is now an exhale. Inhale back. Exhale. Now we're back to inhale. Now we're inhaling. Now we're exhaling. Last rep. And just rest your head heavily. Wouldn't you wipe the knees a little bit side to side? We're gonna do a few pull ups and then a very brief unilateral pull through straps to take us to the end. You can always take child's pose or come off the box and do something else or do some side arm work, ab work with sitting on the box, facing the side. Okay, pull ups. Walk yourself up. Make sure that you're just your chest is off the edge. We want to make sure we're not too far forward to begin. Really find your support through the abdominals and legs so we don't slip on the box. Walk yourself up just above that top eye bolt. Adjust your placement of the arms if it's too much shoulder flexion. You can go lower than the eye bolts. And we're going to start with a traction stretch. So just letting your body hang like you're hanging on a bar at a gym. You're just feeling. How the shoulder blades go up into elevation? They upwardly rotate, swiping out to the side, and they lift up as our body goes down towards the foot bar. Creating space in the vertebrae. I'm still lengthening through the legs, creating a little abdominal work so I don't slide off the box. And I'm going to do a few shoulder shrugs here. These can be challenging, so keeping the arms pretty straight, so it's not a pull up yet. Not upper body work so much. It's really just working around those shoulder blades. And the leg and glide down and then up. Downward movement and then elevation. Keep pressing the shoulder blades, elevating them. Three more. This is hard for me on one side. My shoulder blade just feels stuck. So any movement is a celebration for that right side. Okay. Now we're going to do a pull up. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, pull yourself through the uprights. Inhale, back. We're only going to do five. Exhale. Two more. Try to keep my legs a little more close together on these. Five. Now at the top, we're going to go to just three per side. Bring the right hand to the corner. Just three on the left. This is a progression. Someone can choose to not do this and just do a second set of both arms. On this third one, once I'm up, I'm going to switch to the other side, put my left hand on the front frame of the carriage, pressing down for a little more support. It's not just like hanging out there. I'm pressing that hand down. This is my harder side, so whew, it's hard for me to not get crazy, let my body move around too much. I really have to work to stabilize there. And you can take another fraction stretch. I'm going to let my body completely relax now. Even if I slide, it's fine because I'm done with this. Walking it back. Take a little child's pose. I am going to demonstrate just one more thing. Um, but I want us to just rest. Our spinal extensors a bit. Head is heavy. Arms are heavy. Take a few big belly breaths. Relaxing. Letting the belly expand into the thighs. We're going to do three variations, just like we did supine arm work with the unilateral um, one hand and strap, but with pulling straps like on our belly. So we're only going to do three of each, keep it pretty simple, but oh my gosh, how this position changes your relationship to gravity, it's phenomenal. It's so much harder <laughs> for me to do this one, um, but it's also just my imbalances, working the shoulder, the back side of the body, it's so much harder here for me. So you're laying on your box. Reassume your prone position. Get any little fidgets and little niggles out. Move around anything that feels a little tight, crunchy. And then we stabilize, okay? We're going to start with the right side. And we're going to just hold on to the long loop. If that's not, um, actually, sorry, for the first one, we'll hold on to the canvas. 
uncross your straps if it's like mine. Left hand presses into the front corner of the um, carriage. And I'm trying to resist rotating through my body. So it's anti-rotational. Imagine you're doing the same movement with the left arm. We're just doing our straight arm pullbacks. This is like free mutual right now. There we go. Okay. So here I am. Hit inhale. Exhale, straight arm pull back towards the hip for three. Adjusting your tension and holding the canvas is too much. So small move. Right into the tricep kicks. Woo, these are hard. Keeping the elbow lifted to make it more work. Keeping the shoulders away from the ears. Okay, last one. I'm gonna go long loop for this one. I advise you do the same is that T. So we're gonna go out to the side, palm is facing down. And for me, I can't get super high. Your arm doesn't have to be in line with the shoulder. It's okay to be in the plane of scaption. In fact, your shoulder blade will move better upon your rib cage if you are slightly under your shoulder or forward of it. We're gonna pull the pinky blade of the hand towards the hip on an exhale. Inhale out to your T. Even weight through the front of the sides of the pelvis. Oh my gosh, that was so ridiculously hard. Other side. Ah, I need to do these more often. I'm holding the canvas. I'm just gonna fidget a little. Okay. Right hand on the edge of that carriage, lengthening those legs. Do do do. We're ready to move. Okay, almost. One more little neck movement if felt necessary. Uncross that strap. Arms are straight, legs are straight. Shoulders are the only way from the ears. Exhale, draw the arm back to the hip. Inhale, resist the springs as you go forward. When I say resist the springs, resist the springs, yanking that carriage in. You decelerate them, you're in control. Hold it here, elbows high, tricep kicks. Long loop for T arm, okay? Hand is facing down, and I'm going to draw that pinky blade of the hand towards me on this arm. I have a healthier shoulder, I can go a little higher, but I'm still going to be slightly lower than shoulder height, being in that plane of scaption. 